In this example, we're given a table of values that gives us um, two different functions, f of x and g of x, and shows us the different outputs that occur for given inputs. So we want to use this table to evaluate these four different compositions. So first what we're going to do is we're going to look at this one. This is saying f of g of 1. So again, remember, we can rewrite this as f evaluated at g of 1. So first thing we need to do is figure out what is g of 1. So we go to 1. We go to 1 for our input. And we want to know what is the output that we get for g. So we're going to go to g and we're going to look at the output here. So this is saying that we want to evaluate f at whatever the output of g is. So we know that when x is 1, the output of g is 0. So this is 0. So really, we are evaluating f at 0. So now we're going to go back to our input, and we're going to figure out when the input is 0, what is my value of f? So we can see that f of x is equal to 5 when x is equal to 0. So 5 is going to be f of g of 1. So let's try this again. Let's try this with um, a new value. So we want to see what is f of g of 2. So we're going to evaluate our function f at g of 2. So again, we go first to g, and we have to figure out what is its output when the input is 2. So we go to an input of 2, and we go down to our function g. So we want to know what is the output of g when our input is 2. So input of 2, the output is negative 3. So we know that this is really negative 3. So we're evaluating f at negative 3. So what is f of negative 3? So again, this is our input. So go back to the inputs, go back to the x, and figure out what is the value of our function f when x is negative 3. We get 11. Now, again, order matters. Order matters. So we see f of g of 2. That's probably not going to be the same as g of f of 2. So let's take a look at what this composition would be. So again, remember, this is saying we're taking g and evaluating it at f of 2. So now, for this one, first we're going to look at what is the value of my function f when my input is 2. So we go to 2 for the x value, right, for our input, and figure out what is my output for f. So go output of f is 1 when x is 2. So this is equal to 1. So really here, I'm evaluating g at 1. So again, go back to my inputs, my input of 1, and tell me what is my output for g when my input is 1. So g of 1 is 0. So this here is 0. So g of f of 2 is 0. So you can see that f of g of 2 was 11, and g of f of 2 is 0. So these are not the same. So it does matter the order in which you compose these two functions. Now, what's kind of interesting about com uh, composing functions or composition functions is you can actually compose a function with itself, which is what we're doing here. So this is g of g of 1. So we're taking g, our function g, and we're going to evaluate it at g of 1. So we go to 1 for our input, and we want to know what is my output when x is 1. And we're looking at the output for the function g. So we come down to g when x is 1, and we get 0. So this, we want to know, we really know is 0. So what is g of 0? So again, the input is 0. So go to 0 on the input and figure out what is the output for g. It is 1. Now, this table clearly does not show all of my possible values. Because if I wanted to evaluate um, g of f of negative 3, for example, g of f of negative 3, that's not going to be so easy to do. Because if I evaluate f at negative 3, I get 11 for my output, which means 11 would have to be the new input for g. But 11 is not listed as an input here. So we would either have to extend our table further 
or figure out whatever our functions are to be able to evaluate this. So we're pretty limited with what we can use in this table. Um, but in a case like this, you're not going to be an asked, asked a question where you would have to extend the table or not. Uh, most of the time, your answers are going to be restricted and confined to be within this table. So just keep that in mind.